Babylon's Fall is out. I played it. I got a review code. And I'm glad I didn't spend my money on it. Look, I have a history of playing mediocre games on this channel. I played Ball and Wonder World to completion, and I actually enjoyed it. And I played Godfall, and even though I think that game was undercooked, there were certain elements to it that made me want to at least complete it so I could give a proper review on it. So I was hoping to have a similar experience with Babylon's Fall. A game that peaked with 600 something players on Steam, and that is really bad. As I do with all these games, I went in with an open mind in hopes to find that one or two things that made the game click. With Ball and Wonder World, it was the cutscenes and a few standout levels. With Godfall, I struggled to find anything like that, but at least the combat was passed. So here's my review slash impressions of Babylon's Fall. No, I didn't beat the game. I literally put five hours into it. So that's all you really need to know about this game. It's not worth your money, but let's jump into it and talk about it a bit more. Babylon's Fall is developed by Platinum Games, a company that has had quite a weird history. They've released some absolutely phenomenal games like Nier Automata, Bayonetta 1 and Vanquished. Vanquished is my favourite Platinum game. But throughout their history they've had a few games that didn't quite hit like The Legends of Korra, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Transformers Devastation. Even though I did like Transformers Devastation. But anyway they are a very inconsistent studio. Babylon's Fall didn't get much pre-release stuff. To be honest, I didn't really fully understand what the game was. I knew it was an action RPG and I knew it was a live service game and that's about it. So I launched up the game and you're met with this strange art style. It's like it's an oil painting and about maybe 5% of the time it works and you can kind of understand the vision they were going for. But then the other 95% of the time the game looks absolutely atrocious and the worst part about it are the character models. Just by looking at the character creation screen. You can see that this character model belongs to a PS3 game, if not a PS2 game. It's absolutely terrible. And this is the main character, like the main character looks this bad. And once you get into the cutscenes, you'll realise all the little background characters look 50 times worse. The game from an aesthetic standpoint has this weird blur over it. it again, they're obviously going for some oil painting and it works like 5% of the time. And the rest is like the game is running at 480p with loads of weird blur visual effects. And I wonder if this was a mobile game at any point. To add all this blur so then eventually it would run better on phones. But anyway, it just looks terrible. There's really not that much to talk in the way of aesthetics. Other than it's just plain weird. It's honestly one of the strangest looking games I have played in a long time. But look, aesthetics aren't everything. Platinum games are the masters of character action combat. Bayonetta 1, Bayonetta 2, Vanquish. They're just absolutely phenomenal. So did they follow suit with Babylon's Fall? No, they didn't. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. All of the Platinum games are super fluid. The characters just feel extremely agile and you have plenty of options at your disposal when it comes to combos, dodging, you can dodge mid-air, so the character feels really fluid. And while Babylon's Fall does have a mid-air dodge, the character feels like he's planted to the ground. So the basics of the combat are you can equip four weapons. One weapon to square, which is a light attack. One weapon to triangle, which is a heavy attack. And then two weapons that you can equip to L2 and R2. Now the X and square weapons are just like any other normal weapons. The L2 and R2 weapons are like projections off your Gideon's coffin off your back. And your Gideon's coffin is something they explain in the story. The story is bad. Voice acting is bad. Delivery is bad. Everything about the story is bad. I skipped all the cutscenes. I'm not going to talk about the story because I rarely talk about story on my channel, especially in games like this. But then our short tangent is over. Let me talk about how weird the combat is. So as I said, you have light and heavy attacks, X and square, and then L2 or 2 attacks. And at the start, it was like, oh, this is pretty interesting because you can have any combination of weapons. So my square could be a sword. My triangle could be a rod that deals some magic damage. My L2 could be a big hammer and then my R2 could be a bow. And I was like, whoa, that's really interesting. But then you soon realize that the only way to win at this game is the button mash. The enemies are super spongy and you'll soon realize that there's absolutely zero strategy to combat. All I did was hold L2 on R2 so my weapons would slash and then go square triangle, square triangle, square triangle, square triangle. To my knowledge, there doesn't really seem to be any real combos. There might be a few where like square, square, triangle, but I didn't really notice much difference between actually putting input in the combat or just literally going square, triangle, square, triangle. There's zero strategy to the combat. And the enemies, I've never seen enemies with so much health, seriously. Every single enemy feels like it takes about 30 seconds to kill. And don't get me started on the boss fights. Oh my god. When you get onto the boss fights, even with a party of four, this game does have online co-op as it is a live service game. But even in a party of four, the boss fights feel like they go on for about 10 minutes. Their attack patterns are interesting, but they really don't deal that much damage. So realistically, you can just sponge the hits and just keep spamming them. Some of their designs are cool, and in general, the aesthetics of the enemies are quite interesting. But fighting them is just 
so boring. I've never had less fun. From the YouTubers and reviewers that I watch, I'm certainly more easy to please than most. My whole goal with this channel is to find the fun in games because I think part of the games media has kind of moved away from that. And I found the fun in games like Godfall, Marvel Avengers and Ball and Wonder World, but I just couldn't find any fun in this game. So once you meet the first set of missions, you're led into the hub, and the hub is quite small, but I personally like that because I think hubs like Destiny's Tower are just too big, and you just have to walk so far in between menus. Like, I, I personally would prefer if these hubs were just menus, so then I can just access them through a menu rather than walk into the place. But anyway, this is very small, so you can get to the different parts of the hub quite easy. And in the hub, you have a shop, you have a blacksmith, and a quest board. They're the only three things I ever interacted with. Everything else is just NPCs that spell absolutely useless dialogue. So the shop is pretty useless. You can buy stuff with the in-game currency, but you can also buy currency off the PSN. And from what I can see, it only leads to cosmetic stuff, which is cool, but I have absolutely zero interest in it. And for the blacksmith, I assume you can upgrade things here, but I haven't gotten far enough to unlock it. I've played five hours, I gave up. It's not a fun game. So once you go to the quest board, you pick the area, and each area has X amount of missions. And as you go through the missions, the final one is like a boss. Okay, that, that's cool, Grant. But the level design is absolutely absolutely off. Marvel Avengers and Godfall both had open areas where you could kind of explore, so there was a small bit to do outside of just running from point A to B. But Babylon's Fall just says feck this, and just makes it out of corridors. Literally, straight corridors with turns and more turns, and maybe you come to a fork in the road. And you can walk left for five seconds, find a chest, and then continue on your merry way. It's just, I can't understand how boring the level design is. It's, I, I could literally do a better job at this. And the thing is, this game has been in development for ages. Now, I don't know any of the history, whether it's been cancelled, whether it's been rebooted, what budget they got, etc. But this level design is some of the most uninspired and boring level design I have ever seen in a game. The levels themselves are quite varied. Like one you're running through a broken down castle, the next you're running through a forest, another one you're running through a big lava cave. Like from a visual standpoint, they are diverse, but from a gameplay standpoint, they're literally just straight corridors. As you go through, they become less like straight corridors and they're slightly windy corridors through a cave or something. But at the end of the day, it's still, here's point A, here's point B, go to it. That's it. The progression is similar to any of these live service games. Each item has like a power level and then it takes like an average of your power level and it will say a mission is like, oh, you need to be power level 25 and you know, you want to be power level 26 to beat it comfortably or blah, blah, blah. I said it at the start of the video. I really like to go into games like this with an open mind and give them a go. I was planning on finishing this game because I like to see them to the end because maybe there's something in it that some people might find interesting. And as someone who is relatively easy to please when it comes to games, especially action RPGs, the fact that this game doesn't even compel me to finish it is a really big problem. If it can compel someone like me to finish it, then I personally cannot see anybody enjoying this game. I managed to team up with randomers as I was playing through some of the missions. So there is a small community, but I really don't know how long it'll last. This game doesn't inspire anything in me. It's the definition of a game, like just a game that works. I could load into missions. I didn't experience any bugs. The combat worked. The graphics are strange. The level design is weird. I just have no feelings towards this game other than I just can't finish it. It's not worth anyone's money and time. Even if it's free to play, I wouldn't even waste your time downloading it. I mean, I'm just done with it. I couldn't even play any more than five hours of the game. I mean, just, just don't buy it. That's it. That's the end of the video. I really appreciate you watching. I'm kind of worried what's going to happen to Platinum now. Like, I'm sure they're, they're still working on Bayonetta 3. So if that comes out and it's a smash hit, they might be able to survive to another game. But things aren't looking very good for them. They need to release a strong Bayonetta game. And then just go on and release another near game because that's all we're waiting for. Or another Metal Gear Rising Revenge and set. That game was really good too. I really appreciate your time. This video's kind of ended on a bit of a damper. I, I generally tend to like to keep things positive, but there, there's zero to stay positive on this game. Don't buy it. Don't forget to subscribe. Join the Discord down below if you want to. We have some nice chats about games there. I will be live streaming at some point, so keep your eye out for that. Follow me on Twitter, blah, blah, blah. And I'll see you all on the next video.